Mike is a poet. <laughs> Thank you, Don. Hey, you folks, uh, how is, awesome. is there a man who um, who is more community minded than Don Campbell? Can you give a to him, guys? <laughs> I think it's no exaggeration to say the man has published hundreds of people, and um, I don't know anybody who's opened as many doors for as many writers as you. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Good. <laughs> Unpredictable like January rain. Santa Ana winds come from the east. Eucalyptus trees in the left turn lane. Mother Nature unleashed on Pasadena streets. What's the first one? Mm -hmm. Gonna mix it up a little bit today. And when she said that, the crystal shit fragmented. I've been walking for miles, the hard drive crashed. All I wanted was a coffee. 900 poems later, she said, democracy hinges on disagreement, muscle car, surplus stores, and Craigslist. I reached for the keyboard, digital telepathy traced to torrents. Tell me, what was it she said again? It's called Study 17. one is called The Power of Place. Has anyone here ever heard of Dolores Hayden? She's a, she's a poet. Uh, she's actually more famous as an urban planner and as a landscape architect. But she has a project called The Power of Place. And her whole thing is to remember forgotten women and people of color. Has anyone ever heard of the story of Biddy Mason in downtown LA? Um, Biddy Mason was a woman who, um, there's a state park dedicated to her in downtown LA. And she was actually originally a slave, but when she came to Los Angeles, she was declared free in the 1850s, and she was a midwife. And she delivered hundreds of babies, and she became very wealthy in the 19th century, and she owned a bunch of land in downtown LA. Number one, women didn't own land in the 19th century, let alone an African American woman. So this woman ended up becoming very wealthy, she fed a bunch of homeless people. She delivered hundreds of babies. Um, she also started the first AME church in LA. And uh, basically, she's a saint. She's just this incredible woman, but nobody ever knew her story. So uh, this woman named Dolores Hayden created a public park called Biddy Mason State Park. It's actually between 3rd and 4th Street between Spring and Broadway. Mm -hmm. And there's a 60-foot wall that tells her whole life story. And um, this woman, Dolores Hayden, also has this project where she recognized all of these uh, Chicano garment workers. And then she also recognized all these women that were in the Japanese internment camp. So she has a whole really cool project. If you're more interested in her, check out her book called The Power of Place. Uh, but she also writes some really cool poems, too. But uh, anyway, she's uh, one of my favorite uh, because I almost went into urban planning, but I was always writing poems the whole time. So like, I've always kind of had this split interest. I'm equally a journalist and a poet. So anyway, this woman, Dolores Hayden, I like public history. I like, I like taking history that isn't as well known and making that more well known. Uh, so this poem is called The Power of Place. Possibilities of place memory, the streetscape in Little Tokyo on First Street, brass workers in Waterbury, the laundry workers in New York's Chinatown, the Armenian Genocide Memorial in Montebello, the internment camps at Manzanar, Biddy Mason State Park, the camera crafted by Toyo Miyataki, the Black Heritage Trail on Beacon Hill, cobblestone bricks, the Seneca Falls Project, the Plaza of the Pueblo with walls could speak, on the sidewalk, in the storefront, four families in a flower field, fishermen on Terminal Island, half-mast flags at Point Furman, fresh cut fruit stands, painted trucks, technicolor murals, public statues, Biddy Mason's freedom papers, the deed to her homestead, Forgotten addresses on a timeline, the story of a working woman of color, a site of struggle, sacred space, the landmarks, the beacons, the antipodal points, places as function of time, the world as process, the perspective of experience, the path and pauses acquire density of meaning. This one is called Composition in a New Key, and it's about how technology is changing literacy, and it's um, I've been teaching, I've been working a lot lately. I used to work with high school students, but now I'm working more with uh, junior college students and early university students. And these millennial kids, I mean, my, my five-year-old daughter, let alone, is faster on the iPad than I am, okay? But uh, <laughs> this is about the way technology is changing literacy. And the, the poem speaks for itself, but it's called Composition in a New Key. 
We convene in the echoes of those who came before. We have a moment. The proliferation of writings outside the academy is contributing quickly to the creation of new genres. Literacy today is undergoing a tectonic shift. What do our references mean? How visual is the text? Close up, flashback, frame cut, segue. The screen is the language of the vernacular. Students negotiate the bandwidth, dip over the digital divide. New print material like the novel published in serial installments. The audience shaped the text and process. Reading circles and the writing public operate in an economy driven by use value. Communities cross international borders as a means of organizing social action. Artists and activists, poets and musicians, the topography of higher education and literacy split, split between print and screen. Oral communication in the context of peer review, a new set of outcomes, a new set of practices, a post-process curriculum related to real-world genres. Writing is alive when it connects to human activity. The epistemology, the conventions, the shift in register, a shift in modality, the variety of academic texts. The space is created here for reflection. The role reflection plays in composing the canons of rhetoric, invention, arrangement, style, memory, delivery, identity. The canons interact in a print portfolio, a single claim, an accumulating body of evidence, a patchwork project. The potential of arrangement is a function of delivery. Map their interrelationships. Technology changes literacy. Practice activity and curriculum circulation. The overlapping, overlapping curricular spaces signal a reformation in process. Civic literacy is global. The communicative potential of the writing public is a metaphor of tremors. We are at the center. The changing face of literacy, composition in a new key. Mm -hmm. All right, would you rather hear um, what one vehicle or where do we go once we've been erased? The matter. Where do we go once we've been erased? Mm -hmm. Okay. We live in a netherworld. The sides were picked so long ago. It's a violent collision between matter and the infinite. We don't give up easily. You have to live somewhere, and even then the ego holds on. Where do we go once we've been erased? I can only keep track of things in front of my face. This makes for a chaotic landscape. It takes a train crash or the invasion of cancer to the brain to make us cry. We make it brutal through our resistance. It doesn't matter who we are or what we've done. Even a flower pot on the porch can trigger it. The pecking order was established in the last millennium. We have a carbon footprint. I can feel my molecules dissolving. Still, the earth turns tenderly. It was just here a minute ago. There's no escaping it. Being alive leaves its mark on earth. It's always been so. Those gold-colored glasses they wear shape a vision which so many of us are airbrushed out. We have the fingerprints of money like a row of bruises. The body will dissolve until even the memory is gone. Did I put it someplace safe? Was it mislaid like my glasses or my keys? Hold on, I still have more to do today. I forgot my pendulum. Was it tucked into a drawer? The minute everything is put away, you can't afford it anymore. We lost track of real happiness way before we got here. <laughs> Doing a bunch of poems that I don't really do out in public and just partially to entertain myself, really. But I mean, as far as, you know how you always do the same ones, so I'm trying to mix it up. Trying to mix it up a little bit. It's all right. It's so nice to be here, though. Hey, I liked your piece, man. Yeah. That was, it was good. A lot of good words in there. A little paranomasia, a little flip, flip, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, arts and crafts flourished in the Royal Seiko. Chaparral hills of underground water flow. Most of the time, the dry creek slow. Homesteaders built craftsman homes a century ago in Sycamore Grove. Arts and crafts flourished in the Royal Seiko. Poets and artists like Charles Fletcher Lawrence settled in the lush landscape of wooded oaks. Most of the time, dry creek slow. The river ran, ran wild a long time ago. The concrete came for flood control. Arts and crafts flourished in the Royal Seiko. Figueroa is the intersection of the avenues. The river tunnels the canvas for crews. Most of the time, the dry creek slow. Everything changed when the freeway was built. The concrete covered flowing water below. Arts and crafts flourished in the Royal Seiko. It's not time to dry creek slow. I love that. <laughs> I love the Royal Seiko. And you know what else? This bungalow he heaven is a beautiful neighborhood. This is one of Pasadena's most beautiful neighborhoods. Though everybody talks about millionaires' mansions on Orange Grove Ave and all that. Like this neighborhood right here in that little village down Washington. This is a really nice neighborhood of Pasadena. And just, just, I can see why you've been doing poetry here so long, sir. You know, it's a, it's a great spot. 
I'm gonna just do that. I'll explain later, I'll explain later. I'm just gonna do a couple more and then get out of here. Hey, this one is from my man, Max Dio. This is called Corruption, man. And um, this man has been one of the hardest working guys for a long time, man. I mean, I have to say, man, you have a heart bigger than Texas. So give it up for Max Dio. You guys. The man will, uh, there was a time before I had my kids where I would sometimes do two, three, or four poetry venues in one night. Um, but Matt, probably doing five venues in one night sometimes, right? <laughs> but I mean, that's part of the fun. I mean, um, when my wife was a flight attendant, that's all we did was poetry nonstop. And it was so fun. It was a big part of my 20s and 30s, just running around town doing poetry forever. So I'm glad to see that Matt and some of his good colleagues are, are keeping that tradition alive for us. So. Thank you, Mike. How's everything been, man? Good, 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 good. Cool, cool. You go from seeing the guy a couple of times a month to only every few months now, because, um, man, you know, I'm trying to get some sleep sometimes, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, um, let me see here. Okay, corruption, corruption, ethical disruption, justice interruption, corruption, Baghdad, Cambodia, London, bribery, extortion, embezzlement, nepotism, money laundering, and genocide, how many have died, corruption. From the Constitution to the Industrial Revolution, political execution, starvation, forced labor, all of this was the daily flavor for Cambodians under the Khmer Rouge regime. And damn near 2 million civilians were killed in cold blood. The killing fields filled Cambodian countrysides, and this goes down worldwide, from the diamond mines of Sierra Leone and Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo, Long Beach, California. The whole country pays a price for greed. Power lies in the hands of few. Those who start wars never fight them. Abuse of authority creates tyrants, hell bent on daily violence. Pol Pot, Bush, Bin Laden. Who do you believe in? What do you subscribe to? Some live by the gun. The apocalyptic hum of a cold blooded drum. Corruption, corruption, ethical disruption, justice interruption, corruption. Silence, violence, neighborhoods of steel childhoods. Crossfires in the killing fields. No shields in the ghetto. Drive bys are real and snitches die. Who's the real wise guy? Most turn a blind eye just to survive. Hate crimes from all sides. Soldiers, sailors, assailants, politicians, evangelists. Nobody talks about bloody Christmas. Even the chair of internal affairs laced up his lair for extramarital as affairs. Corruption is everywhere. Restrictive housing covenants, after our nightclubs, the casting couch, something in your mouth. Keep your mouth closed. Ask no questions and tell no lies. Nobody talks about genocide. Broken boulevard, shattered dreams, spiritual warfare, chaos is in the air, freedom of fear is at war. To tell the truth can't erase the past. But it can stop it from happening again. He uses poetry to turn the pain into medicine. Corruption, corruption, ethical disruption, justice and corruption, corruption. To tell the truth can't erase the past, but it can stop it from happening again. Mm -hmm.